Hello friends, Merry Christmas. We are so glad that you are joining us for worship today. I'm Pastor Micah. I'm Sarah. And I'm Pastor Randy. And we have a wonderful Christmas Eve worship service Mm -hmm. prepared for you. Mm -hmm. And we are so glad that you're joining us in order to celebrate the birth of Jesus this year. Friends, one of our favorite things at St. Peter is to sing Silent Night by Candlelight. Wouldn't you Mm -hmm. guys agree? Absolutely. 100%. Yes. If you don't have your candles and your lighter, go grab them now. We really want you to participate with us in just a few moments in singing Silent Night by Candlelight. And as we get started, would you please join me for an opening prayer? Lord Jesus, we give you so much thanks for being the light of the world who has come. Happy birthday and for shining your light among us. May your light just shine in our hearts and lives this evening to lift one another up and point to you, Lord, in these dark times. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to us. In your name we pray, amen. Repeat the sounding joy. 
And while they were away in Bethlehem, the time came. All of heaven leaned in closer to witness the moment that had finally arrived. It was time for Mary to give birth to her firstborn son, to the one who is the firstborn over all creation. The quiet night in Bethlehem was interrupted by the cries of a woman in labor. Her pain-filled cries were soon followed by the infant cries of the one who spoke all things into existence. As she held him in her arms, wrapping him snugly in cloth, she looked into the face of the one who would save her soul. The one who would bring salvation to everyone who would believe. That night, she placed him in a feeding trough in the stable where she and Joseph found shelter. This young mother and father had nowhere to stay that night, so they spent the first hours with their son in the humblest of places. And it was in that humble place that Emmanuel first sighed and squirmed and slumbered. This infant boy was the Word, the Word that became flesh and dwelled among us. And that night, the word whispered heaven's glory with every breath he breathed. A reading from Isaiah 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness on them has light shone. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore the zeal of the lord of hosts will do this it's time for that most sacred tradition here at saint peter when we light our candles and join together in singing silent night so would you please join the ford family in lighting your candles and together let us sing Mommy, girl, Mommy says Silent night Hold 
our Father who works in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This line is a as the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. On the same night, under the same starry sky, not too far away, there were shepherds taking care of their flock during the night watch. It was an ordinary night as the animals quietly grazed. But soon, this ordinary night was interrupted by glory. Something caught their attention. Suddenly, the shepherds realized they were no longer alone in this field that night. An angel stood before them. The shepherds were terrified, but the angel comforted them, saying, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news. Tonight a Savior has been born in Bethlehem. He is the Messiah, and he was born for you. The angel told the shepherds exactly where to find this baby boy. This gift of hope come to earth. He would be wrapped snugly in cloth and lying in a feeding trough in a nearby stable in the city of David. In the blink of an eye, the glorious multitude of the heavenly host appeared, surrounding those humble shepherds in glory. With their voices, they lifted up an angelic song of praise to God. And in that breathtaking moment, the heavens boldly proclaimed the glory of the one who not only knew the stars by name, but knew the names of those humble shepherds in the field. This quiet night turned into the most glorious of nights, and the shepherds hurried off to find the baby boy. They found him lying in a feeding trough, exactly as the angel had said. The shepherds couldn't keep this good news inside. They told everyone they met about the angel, the heavenly host, the young couple, and the precious Christ child. And all who heard it were amazed, just as we continue to be amazed as we remember this night, this moment, when hope was made known to us.
in excelsis Deo. Oh, 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 Gloria in excelsis Deo. While Mary and Joseph were in Bethlehem, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Merry Christmas, friends. We are so glad that you are joining us for worship this year. Whether you're in your home or living room or gathered with some family in a small, safe, COVID-approved other way, we are glad that you made the choice to join us for live streaming worship. And we pray that this time together would be a blessing to you. You know, this Christmas is one unlike any other. I think we can all safely say that. And, and in the midst of your Christmas celebrations, I'm sure that you're trying to find ways to do some of your favorite traditions in a new way or hold on to them, or maybe some of you brave friends trying something brand new. When I think back to some of my most cherished Christmas memories and the traditions of my youth, one of the places I go to is the Muppets Christmas Carol. I'll never forget when I was in middle school, I saw this for the first time when my teacher invited me and the rest of our class over to her house during the school day to watch a movie and enjoy some of her favorite Christmas goodies. Whether this version of A Christmas Carol is your favorite or another movie or audio version or if you just love to read the book, it's probably one of our favorite traditions. Now, uh, Charles Dickens, who wrote A Christmas Carol, also wrote another important book entitled The Tale of Two Cities. And the opening words to this book, I think perhaps more than A Christmas Carol, may fit our experience of Christmas in 2020. He starts out that uh, seminal work with these words, It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of unbelief. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. And it was the winter of despair. Christmas always is and has been a time of contrasts. We see that in A Christmas Carol and we see that in 2020 as well. For some, it's a time of prosperity, of abundance, of celebration, and others, sadly, a time of poverty. It's a season of goodwill and generosity leading to presents under trees and gifts freely given, and, and still sadly, often a season exploited by commercialism and ugly greed. Christmas is a time of family togetherness, even if in different ways this year. But it's also, and especially this year, a time of excruciating loneliness. It's a season filled with light, whether lights on your trees or on your houses, but it's also a season of darkness, even as the days have grown shorter and shorter. Christmas is, to borrow words from Dickens, the spring of hope, 
for some and for many the winter of despair. Now, don't get me wrong, we all want Christmas to be the best of times and filled with holiday cheer, and that's why we decorate and donate and shop until we drop. We put up trees, hang tinsel, cook our favorite family meals, and put together all kinds of toys for our children and grandchildren to open on Christmas morning. Why? Because we all want a holly, jolly Christmas. But let's be honest. As much as we want Christmas to be the best of times, sometimes it is the worst of times. Our reading from Isaiah chapter 9 resonates with a tale of two cities. The prophet's message is also one of contrasts. It was a season of light and a season of darkness. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 says it this way, The people who walked in darkness, those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, darkness. The people that Isaiah describes here as sitting in the dark uh, included the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, the land beyond the Jordan along the sea also called Galilee of the Gentiles in chapter 9 verse 1. Like all the other portions of ancient Israel, Zebulun and Naphtali were named after two of Jacob's twelve sons who went with him down to Egypt, where, along with their brothers, they became a great nation, just like God had promised. After living in Egypt for over 400 years, God rescued their descendants, and after another 40 years, wandering through the wilderness, gave them their inheritance in this promised land. And for these two tribes, the land was beyond the Jordan, along the sea, and later was known as Galilee of the Gentiles. To get to the time of Isaiah, we need to fast forward another 700 years to when mighty Assyria, the evil empire that was always lurking over Israel's shoulder, shoulder, attracted the tribes from the north, defeating their armies and leveling their cities and exiling many of them to distant lands. It was the worst of times. Zebulun and Naphtali walked in darkness and dwelt in a land of deep darkness. And we know all about deep darkness. Some of us have spent way too much money this year, hoping that a few more presents will somehow help, while others are worried sick about their financial future. Some are struggling with health issues or worry about the health of a loved one, wondering if this might be their last Christmas while others are grieving the recent loss of a family member or a friend, a grief amplified and extended by this global pandemic. Some are wrestling with old hurts that won't heal and new wounds that won't go away. And still others are consumed by fear and dread of the unknown, and the constant churn of change that only seems to be speeding up. In the face of all of this darkness, there's an even more foreboding darkness we need to acknowledge. John chapter 3 and verse 19 says it this way, This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. And if we're honest, all too often we too can love the darkness of self-centered living and live in the darkness of half-lives and untruth. And sometimes we long for the darkness that feeds the sinful desires of our broken sinful nature. It may seem inescapable, like the end of a story, but it couldn't be further from the truth. Let me take you back to that verse we started with in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. There's a few more words I left out the first time. Let me show them to you now. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Did you catch that? 
This is no ordinary light. Isaiah calls it a great light. As the people of Israel looked to the fulfillment of this promise, they might first have thought that it was fulfilled in the Old Testament hero Gideon, who defeated 120,000 Midianites with his army of just 300 men. Judges chapter 7, verse 20 tells us that grasping the torches in their left hand and holding in their right hands the trumpets they were to blow, they shouted, a sword for the Lord and Gideon. And 300 torches lit the night. What a great light. Soon another light would shine in Zebulun and Naphtali. King Josiah marched north with the burning torch of his newfound scroll of God's Word. This is recorded in 2 Kings chapter 23. Literally, the Word of God, which, as the psalmist says, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Through King Josiah, it shone brightly for the people of Israel as they reclaimed the Word and the worship of their one true God. What a powerful light. But the greatest light... The light that Isaiah had foretold was yet to appear. Isaiah 9, verse 6 tells us this is what that light will be like. To us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace majesty in the midst of the mundane holiness that was discovered in the middle of cattle manure divinity entering the world on the floor of a stable through the womb of a teenage mother and the presence of a carpenter as his earthly father jesus the light of the world took on flesh so that he might take you into his arms Heal your hurts, forgive your sins, and destroy your darkness. Jesus took on flesh not to demonstrate the innocence of infancy, but in order to live a life that we never could and to die a death so that we never would. Jesus is the dazzling, brilliant, eternal light that we long for, And so it's no wonder that in the Nicene Creed, we declare that Jesus is light of light. With Gideon, the light burned out through the apostasy of worship of a false god and the anarchy of his own son, Abimelech. With Josiah, the light burned out at his death and at the hands of Pharaoh Necho at the battle of Megiddo. And so would the light of this Jesus this Christ child burn out as well? Would it cease to shine for all time? Would the betrayal, the blood, and the brutal burial of the Son of God be his final curtain call? Was that to be the end of his story? Another light snuffed out? Not on your life. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end, Isaiah had foretold. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace were His names. The grave that may have held His body for a few days, and it may have looked like His light had finally been extinguished once and for all. But you all know how that worked out, don't you? On Easter morning, when the light of the angels shone into the tomb, it was found to be empty. Nothing could contain the power of Jesus' light. No darkness could overcome the light of Christ, which has come into our world. And at this very moment, that same Christ is alive shining brightly in the heavenly places with his heavenly father and all the saints worshiped by angels ready to return to banish the power of darkness once and for all and his promises are sure his light shining brightly and his love knowing no end you know over a century ago 
uh, the Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur Wright, right about the time of Christmas, were down in Kitty Hawk along the coast of the Atlantic in North Carolina, testing out their wonderful flying machine, when on December 17th, in 1903, they finally were able to get it off the ground. That first human manned flight was born. In their excitement, we're told, they sent a telegraph to their sister, sister Catherine, which said, flew 120 feet, we'll be home for Christmas. And when Catherine got the news, she ran to the local newspaper editor in Dayton, Ohio, and showed the telegraph to the editor. He took one glance at it, and it said that he replied, how nice. The boys will be home for Christmas. He completely missed the point. Yes, it was nice that they might be back in time for Christmas, but, but the main point, the good news in this message, was actually that they had flown in an airplane for the first time. How often do we miss the good news, the big news of Christmas? When we get caught up in the tinsel and toys, the trees and the trimmings, all of those things are nice, just like it was nice that the Wright brothers would be home for Christmas. However, that's not the big news, is it? The big news of Christmas is that God took flight. Did he ever? He took flight and traveled from heaven to earth to be born as a child and to bring his light and his power into our lives. Whether tonight for you is the best of times or the worst of times, the spring of hope or the winter of despair, the birth of Jesus, announced by Isaiah, witnessed by the shepherds, and marveled at by the Magi, leaves us with good news of great joy. And what would that be? The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of darkness, on them light has shined. The light of Christ, my friends, has come into the world. The light no darkness can overcome. And that's what we're here to celebrate. That's the good news of Christmas. And so may your Christmas this year be merry and bright, filled with this glorious light. Amen. You know, for some of you, you're hearing this good news for the first time. And others, it feels like it's the first time because maybe you've been away from church for a while or maybe you've let your faith go on autopilot and it's been challenged in this season. Wherever you are, when you come to worship here this Christmas Eve, I want you to know that Jesus is ready to invite you to a new beginning. A beginning which will lead to a lifetime of faith and an eternal life filled with his light. And so wherever you are, I'd like to invite you to fold your hands, bow your heads, close your eyes, and let me lead us in a word of prayer. Gracious God, light of light, who has come into the world, we thank you for this good news of great joy, which is for all people. And we pray that in the midst of our darkness, your light would shine. For some of us, we've wandered away from the faith. For some of us, we've never even heard this good news. For others, this is a story that we cherish and delight to hear year after year. Regardless of where we have come from and how this year has gone, God, we pray that you would shine your light into our life and fill us with hope and peace, joy and power which knows no end. Guide us down the path of truth and light as we seek to know and follow you more fully in this year and every year that is to come. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, I'd like to invite you to take a couple next steps. The first would be to get out your phone or tablet or computer right now or right after the service and check in to worship today. This will allow us to know that you are here and thank you for joining us for worship. It's simple and easy to do. Just go to our website, fulllifeinchrist.org, and click on the check-in button and answer a couple quick questions to let us know who you are, where you are, and who's with you for worship. The next thing would be to respond with generosity. We're so thankful for the ways that you have been supportive of our ministry, especially through this crazy year of 2020. Every year, the last month is our largest when it comes to generosity, and especially the last 10 days. And so if you have already made a year-end gift, we want to thank you for that. But if you're still looking to do that, now is a time that you can. 
You can do that with your phone or again on your tablet or your computer or you can send a check to St. Peter at 111 West Olive in Arlington Heights 60004. And if you'd like to make that a year-end gift as part of our Propel Matching Challenge where a $100,000 matching grant is available, that would be awesome as well. Just note that on the check or choose that option in your online giving choice. Whatever way you choose to give, this is part of your worship in a way that you can give back to God and to his work in this world in a powerful way that blesses others and our ministry. So thank you. Friends, at St. Peter, we are invested in helping you deepen your faith and walk with Jesus and with other believers. Join us for these upcoming events in January. Our new Sunday worship series will focus on things like COVID and infertility, depression, cancer, and Alzheimer's in a teaching series called Beyond Coping to Hoping, beginning January 10th. Join Pastor Randy on Wednesday evenings from 8 to 9 p.m. for a Zoom Bible study titled The Amazingness of God, looking at Genesis 1 to 11. Also, there is still room in our online community groups. Deepen your relationship with God and with other believers. For more information and ways to get connected, visit our website and Merry Christmas. Saying Merry Christmas is kind of tricky this year, especially when we're all at home tonight. We want to give you some Christmas greetings and some Christmas cards from family at St. Peter. Enjoy. Merry Christmas, love team Brown. A very Merry Christmas. And a blessed New Year from the Borchers. We just want to thank you for worshiping with us this evening. And from everyone here at St. Peter, we pray that God grant you a very Merry Christmas and a most blessed New Year. And as we go this evening, we want to send you with the very name and presence of the Lord upon you and your loved ones. As you go, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Well, shepherds kept their watching for silent fox by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out an angel chorus that hailed the Savior's birth. Go 
Tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born Down in a lonely manger The humble Christ was born And God sent a salvation the blessed Christmas, Christmas morn. Hey, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is.
Thank you.